This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. It is 6.40 p.m. on Wednesday, April 13th, and we are calling the Finance Committee uh, budget meeting to order. Um, first on our agenda, we have um, the town administrator here with us to talk about the town-wide budget. No, this is fine. Thank you. They can shoot the ball back in my head. <laughs> so where is this? Is it? Does it say town? Town wide. Yeah. It should say town wide. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I found one thing that was wrong with that one, and I don't know why, because I remember putting it in. But uh, on the internet services, it should say twenty-seven fifty-nine seventy-six. Where should it say that? In both the budget one tab and the uh, budget two wish list tab. For cover, I believe okay. it was, let's say, I Does think it, it let was. me change it? Did, did you should. update? It should. Yeah. And do you have, maybe sometimes mm -hmm. you have a little enable it Formula. on top of it? No, you should oh, be able to. Right here, right? Yep. Yeah, instead of the 1679, I should say. 2759.76. So I'm assuming that Spectrum Charter increased their prices once again? Well, they haven't yet, but they probably will mid year. But this is since we are uh, have ordered uh, voice over IP telephone, so we actually have a telephone system. One of the pieces of that was the ad hoc tech commi committee recommended that we increase our internet tier. Uh, one tier uh, mm -hmm. from the current one, which was an additional, uh, uh, I think it was $110 a month over what we're uh, currently paying. So that reflects that. Twenty-seven fifty-nine seventy-six. Correct. So was, actually, the other piece of that actually it was $100 a month extra. More uh, than what you're paying now. Well, it's more than that because partway through the year, about halfway through, they changed their charge to us from $109 to I think it's 118 So they had a mid-year change. So this uh, reflects that change also. So the speeds will be faster and stuff? Speeds will be faster, exactly. And fr from what I'm told and not all that familiar with the voice over IP is that um, it can take a lot of bandwidth if you get a number of people on uh, utilizing the phones at one time. So with the voice over IP for the phones, you have to increase your internet service and then increase your telephone costs? Well, actually what you'll see reflected here is a drop in the telephone cost, which actually probably should drop even further in the second year of it. Uh, but when you implement it, uh, you don't immediately drop all your, well, you won't drop all your copper lines anyway, because you'll keep some for uh, emergency use. Uh, so that they don't go down and all the, uh, the fax lines will stay on copper. But uh, probably starting around three months after it's implemented and everything's working, we'll start canceling uh, Verizon lines. So you'll see a drop in what the uh, phone costs were to which we were paying uh, just to Verizon. Yeah, because I think this formula is backwards, that's why. Because it says year over year change is a positive 1950. Oh. Okay, yeah. So that's why I was like, mm, yeah. that's not, because normally the phone bill is like $8,000 or $7,800. Yeah, bucks. it was, uh, what was it? It's, it was, uh, seven, oh, where the heck is it? It's like $7,800 for fiscal year 22. All right. Yeah. So that's why I was like, and we're going down to 5850. Okay. So it should be a minus 1950. It was just M minus C instead of yeah. C minus M. I did find a couple of those that were still existing that were backwards. Um, so how about like the fax? 
rather than having a separate line for the facts, did you ever look into like the facts through the computer? You know, where it's where it comes in. So now if you're having this voice over IP or whatever that is, maybe that's a that's, Oh a actually for I don't know, I don't know how all yeah, that works exactly except, but except for a few isolated offices uh, which uh, and, it's, and some of them have to have, shall we say, safe encrypted faxes due to what's coming over them. Um, most of the offices actually, uh, the fax will come into, comes into the copy machine, actually gets distributed by uh, our computer system uh, through, our, through our emails. Oh, it does. Um, yeah, oh. it does. But yes, fa fax is, that, in my opinion, is becoming, uh, shall we say, old technology. Mm -hmm. So I see. I think other than some of the departments that may have some. Uh, I mean, I know I still use it, but yeah. they have. We only have one antiquated machine at, at work now, yeah. and it's like locked in the back room. And mm. there's there's so some information, they don't want especially, us really. especially from like hospitals, doctors, HIPAA, things like that, that uh, they will not use, uh, shall we say, scans or email technology or whatever, it has to be facts. I still mm -hmm. don't understand why. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I wasn't saying get rid of it completely. No, I just no. didn't know if we, yeah. So like in, in the accounting office, it has a separate fax line, a separate number yeah. from the phone number, like so. I guess that's what I was getting. Yeah, at, like mm -hmm. and it goes through the copier it. and right. it's programmed right in the copier. And right, the, um, the health department has a secure yeah, fax they would line have be, to have be, one, be, yeah. because of theirs. Uh, I think Jen's actually shares her phone line yep. in her office. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to go back in the list for the list I had to do for voiceover IP. I think there might be one other one, and, and then there are. Uh, items that have to stay on the copper lines, like our two lines that are used for our uh, fire alarm mm -hmm. system, they have to stay on copper. Uh, the uh, phone line into the elevator uh, as, as an emergency call, if somebody gets caught in there or whatever, has to stay on copper. Mm -hmm. But we will be able to depart with some of them, so uh, we will we'll start seeing a drop in those costs. Uh, web page maintenance is actually, um, you know, probably two years ago when Art retired, well, I won't say retired, but gave up that portion, uh, we started incurring costs uh, for that. Um, we are looking at, uh, shall we say, updating or actually having a new website uh, created and done that is more user friendly and also more user user friendly so uh, internally the departments can do more updating and what have you to it so um, for this upcoming year uh, I have made the assumption that for probably three to six months we'll end up using the existing um, service and then switch over uh, to that and at that point, we should start seeing uh, a reduction in the support costs uh, over what this year and last year was from using that individual. Uh, photocopier lease and supplies went up a little bit. However, uh, uh, both Ian and I are due to uh, replace our copy machine. So one of the things we're looking at, I've got a placeholder uh, for an article to allow um, both the police department and the town hall to uh, lease copy machines for five years instead of the three. So um, if that's the case, this would drop a little bit uh, in my budget, probably Ian's also. Mm -hmm. Now this employment advertising doesn't seem like that's gonna be enough money. And t and t and I don't think it is either, uh, to be honest with you, especially if we start using some of the services uh, like Indeed or whatever. I mean, even just just being on the MMA website is $200 for, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, if you just do the internet, it's 90 and yeah, it's $200 for uh, the internet and the paper piece. Um, I'm just thinking there's, yeah. you know, a few positions at our 
opened in mm-hmm. highway that had been open for a while, a new one, you're yeah. looking for an assessor. Yeah. I don't know, just. Yeah, that's why, that's why you'll see in the wish list bus, uh, budget, and that's, even that's probably low, $1,000 mm-hmm. there. But yeah, my, my instructions again this year was supposed to be, okay, contractual increases, um, mm-hmm. level funded, or, and any contractual increases, you know, both contract-wise or um, uh, vendor-wise that we're seeing could go into the budget one, and then everything else was supposed to go into the tab two. Did you have a question? Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, that's all right. <coughs> uh, postage looks like we'll spend the postage this year because postal service did go up, and they are now forecasting another increase, which would impact uh, fiscal year 23. Uh, legal, um, I put in everything actually. Uh, that everyone had asked for. This includes $5,000 that the uh, planning board had asked for uh, for legal review on zoning bylaw changes. Uh, it also, I had put in uh, $5,000 placeholder uh, for uh, uh, legal review on bylaw review committee uh, bylaws. So. Um, where we are now, this is probably going to go back down at the select board, you know, lets anything stay for legal review for, um, that's additional for planning board, because planning board also requested $15,000 uh, to utilize a consultant to help them rewrite their zoning bylaws, because in the past they've uh, utilized their uh, revolving fund um, that had a decent balance in it, but they have depleted that pretty much. So um, again, I got an inclination from uh, the meeting on last night, they're all starting to blend together, that the select board would probably be looking to actually come down on both the legal expense, which actually sits under their control, um, and probably uh, the planning board request for 15000 for a consultant to uh, do um, the zoning updates. But they may lose some of it. I have a ten- feeling they won't leave all the 15,000 or all the 5,000 that they requested here or all the 5,000 for uh, the bylaw review committee. Um, the PVPC, the uh, increase that's there was what was quoted in the letter we received as far as whether you call it our dues membership or or whatever. Uh, PEG program actually uh, flows off of the, char- the charter use and what we get for funds. Um, so we're really, this isn't coming out of the general fund. I mean, it, we put money in from- It has a matching right, okay. dollar amount in the revenue estimate, yeah. but uh, what you're seeing is, you know, interesting instead of going up as far as more utilization for, you know, cable or in- internet or what have you, uh, the usage is dropping, so the fees we're getting back from Charter and thus out of East Hampton Media are also dropping. Uh, you know, this year we had budgeted it at 68000 and it's uh, going to be a little bit less than that. So, hmm. I guess you might want to include that in the 22 budget column up top because it looks like we're well, increasing it by 67000 Yeah, that was completely blank in the last Yeah, I, and I updated that when I was getting ready for this yeah. meeting, so I'll go over these some of these changes and some of those formula changes with, with Bradley. Uh, that PEG again. programming is done that way to avoid having to go to town meeting to appropriate the funds that you get from Charter. And there's always a lag because you only right. have two or three meetings a, mo- a year right. potentially and you can't pay East Hampton Media without appropriating that money and this kind of right. allows you to get around that, so yeah, to speak. Exactly. Yeah, for because the, the first couple of years I was here, we had we were doing it. You had to did do it the other way. reserve for appropriation, correct? Yeah. yeah. And then um, I had Kathy call and yell at me a bunch of times because <laughs> we weren't giving her her money in a timely manner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she understood once I explained it. I, you know, mm. the state says you can't do it. You can't do can't it. Can't do it. Right. Exactly. Uh, the town hall custodian wages would uh, represent a 2% COLA that the select board asked me to put back into all the non-union uh, personnel. 
uh, telephone, you're seeing a, that little bit of anticipated drop of starting to drop some of the lines once the voice over IP um, is put in place, which should be probably around the end of June, beginning of July. Uh, gas and electric for the town hall, I did because of what I was seeing uh, forecast a 9% increase uh, to that. And and what about the net metering credits and the cow pow credits? They still should they should net out and still be come up the same from what I have been seeing on them. Uh, the net difference should be about a nine percent uh, difference. But we're we're also due, and I don't know because of the, the timing, we're also to due to um, renew our whether you call it electric supply aggregate um, agreement. So uh, what that is going to do in this time uh, depends on you know whether we renew it for like 12 months, 18 months, or 24 months. So that may help us out also. And that's still with Eversource, or did you sign with somebody else? No, it's, uh, well, no, it's still. Uh, <coughs> It was the one that we were using while you were still here through, it was getting billed through Eversource. What was it, second? Through the, isn't that second? Through the it county was, or something? It was the one that was done through HCOG. HCOG, and then they, when HCOG dissolved, they made their own company. Yeah. Oh, Marin. Yes. Yep. 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 He does the, um, he does the cow pow credits too. Yes. They were, yeah, I can't yeah. remember what the, I know his first name was Mayor, but I can't yeah. remember the name of the company. Goldstein? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, building expenses, uh, from what I have received for our estimates for our contractual pieces from um, the BG Mechanical quarterly uh, inspections and swapping out of the filters and belts and the estimates for fire suppression and uh, oh God, what's the other one? I'm going brain dead. <laughs> the elevator? The elevator, yes. Uh, that would uh, account for the $1,500 uh, extra difference that, uh, looking for in the budget tab one. Uh, so I don't, mine doesn't have anything in the town hall one, just the Larrabee one. Right. Uh, these were, probably can get rid of the town hall one, uh, because actually what it was, it's missing from that was when they came over here, it actually have, would have said old town hall and Larrabee town hall to designate the two, so. But that's, so Ian includes that building in his budget? No, but it Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just his, his department yes. building. Yeah. But at one time they were designating. Right, the, no, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. So Between the I two. guess the but difference that's, is. That's in the police department okay. budget. So, yes. Okay. Technical uh, equipment, that's IT equipment. Um, and the upcoming year, we would be looking to replace four computers, one expensive printer, two small printers, and uh, one, uh, one port switch and a um, Wi-Fi drop. So whose computers are you? The ones that would be due that will now be antiquated will be the highway administrative, uh, administrative assistants, my administrative assistant, uh, the assistant town accountants and the and actually the administrator assessor and actually in addition to that I forgot about it the uh, board of assessors is looking to replace their laptop top for remote use mm -hmm. and then Lucy's printer is by far beyond its useful life, been having some issues, and that's the expensive printer. Uh, if we if we go and ma and match it to what its equivalent model is, uh, 
was shocked. It was almost three thousand so. dollars. Mm. Technical services are um, basically all, all the services we use, which you know are IT related, uh, whether that's fixing you know so software issues or uh, connectivity issues, uh, but it. The big portion of that, which it pays for, is um, the storage uh, for our email system currently, uh, storage for our website currently, um, our renewal of our domain name, uh, and currently, and I'll mess this up, we have. Um, have moved over on the uh, laptops that we got through the CARES Act, thank you Vicki, to Microsoft 365. So we've gone from buying licenses to a one year, uh, shall we say, subscription on them, which are $240 each. And we also have 12 computers to get fully over to the Microsoft 365 system, 12 more. Uh, that aren't in the current budget, which we would have to add for that $240 um, uh, Microsoft 365 subscription. Did, did you guys get a new server? It's coming with, we got a $51,000 grant uh, for cy a cybersecurity grant. So um, we went back and forth with that. And some people thought that um, with going to the Microsoft 365 and could totally use the cloud that we didn't need a server anymore. So it ended up uh, getting delayed, but it's going to get um, replaced with this uh, cybersecurity grant. Um, I mean, it definitely uh, seems like we need a server to back up to all the. Well, you, you can back up to the cr cloud, but you, there are still other functions that uh, you can, you need to utilize. What, you know, whether that's through um, utilizing the Wi-Fi system and the other piece of the Wi-Fi system is I'd like to fi finally get it set up so that there is a secure part of the Wi-Fi system. So, you know, whether it's I or Jen or any anyone that has a laptop, if we come into these meetings, we can log into the network. Um, the guest system won't allow you to allow it to the network. And now we just have, have the guest system. But yes, you definitely need a server to uh, do some of the functions. So then will the money that we appropriated four years ago for the server from capital, it has to go back to capital? So that way they have yeah. more money to spend? It may, yes, exactly. Well, yeah. it, would, it has yeah. to if you don't yeah. use it for the server. Right. But I'm just saying yeah. It's, yeah. it's been there and, and yeah. So that way, capital right. has right. more money to be able to yeah. use yes. for something else. Right. Yeah. Right. Right now, the we we will the initial proposal under for what we wanted to do under the grant is um, shall we say exceeds the grant funds. So we'll have to scale back on that a little bit, but we won't scale back on the server. Well, at least you got the grant. That's good. Oh, it, yeah, it, we got less than we asked for again, because I think we asked for about 70, but, um, you know, to get the, the 51 was a, a huge help. So is it, has the server been already, is it like in the process or? No, we haven't, haven't, signed, ordered the, it yet we haven't or signed the proposal yet because of the fact that the initial proposal that came back is higher than what we have for funds. And then like everything else is, because of the chips and stuff in it is most of the components are four or five months out too. So. Uh, Memorial Day stays the same at $200 and then street lighting I had utilized the same 9% uh, calculated increase. I mean I'd, I'd like to think that both, well, elect, that electricity and natural gas and whether it's gasoline or diesel for the vehicles will start falling shortly, but that doesn't seem like it's happening yet. Yeah, I guess for vehicles is not 425 anymore. It's, <laughs> it's at least 395. Mm, yeah. 
which is still considerably more than exactly yeah, that it was, was six months ago. yeah six uh -huh. months ago or whatever so um and then i guess i think the town admin doesn't yours is just selectman expenses salaries uh town reports selectman minutes so those are pretty basic right are you still paying sixty dollars a meeting uh a little little bit different what uh the vendor kathy asked because we've had a lot of long meetings uh recently that are four hours and longer is what she asked was she was fine with staying with the sixty dollars a meeting uh, but asked for eighty dollars a meeting for anything over four four hours or longer and she still does them from the um from the videos yes okay yeah and i forget i should have brought it with me uh i think i used a two-thirds one-third calculation on for uh, meetings under four hours and meetings over yeah you could just take hours. an average of what was you know what they have been in the past <coughs> and what was the admin expense increase because that was the I'm minute. due to renew my uh, MCPPO, so it's for uh, classes related to that. And if it has to come out, I'll just pay it for them out of my own pocket. That's all. What does the acronym stand for? It's the uh, uh, procurement officer for certified procurement officer for the state. So they offer like online classes for you to do they that? They have been. Yeah. Uh, I have an idea that they're probably going to be going back to yeah. uh, the in-classroom pieces again, which the nice thing about the, the Zoom ones was the fact that some of them they like only offer in Boston. And say so it's not bad going to the ones that they offer in Huntington. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or, yeah, or That's whatever. where I went to Huntington when yeah. I took mine. Yeah. Which wasn't kind of, bad. No. Well, I guess if it depends on how they do it on Zoom, but well, and even just in, a recording or yeah. something, you can do it when you want. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's, they were they were still they live. Were still, like yeah. Even at Huntington, and you were in the school, and they had someone from Boston live yeah. uh, on the screen, and they did Huntington, and they did Braintree, and like they did three locations, and then the, those people were actually in Boston because when I was there. And I took it, there was a fire alarm going off, so we had to wait like a half an hour just hanging around because <laughs> everyone had to exit the building. Building? Yeah. Oh, uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, they did it live, but it was still virtual, which is better than having to, you know, truck to Boston, I guess. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Especially, especially when some of those classes are three days in a row. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. Yep. Um, I think. Unless you have any other questions. No. I just have kind of an odd question. Um, you say you're leasing various printers. Is it cheaper to lease than to purchase? Not, not the printers, the, our copy machines. Oh, our big, copy co machines. big copy machines, correct. Is it cheaper to lease than to purchase? It at least defrays the cost over a number of years, so if you're not looking for a, unless you want to do like a used one or whatever, um, it's easier to come up with less amount of dollars over a three or five year period than outlaying five, six, seven thousand Just like buy a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you can get another one, so you, it, usually you're paying less in maintenance costs if you get a new one every three to five years because that you're leasing. It depends on the printer too um, because when I was here I bought the printer for the accounting office outright and it was cheaper than leasing and I got three years of free service and three toners and I only use one since I what I mean I don't know what it's not right, but yeah. like the main one the I'm main one like yeah, the main police one department might be able to do it or Randall because I don't have a huge volume that comes through the main one you would definitely have to right. lease but right. um, but it 
you know, but it all I mean, depends the one on I had, you. The one I had in my office was just, you know, like a cheap yeah. HP multi thing that you could make still one there. or two copies, you know. Is this still there? It's still there, yeah. 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 So the volume of the big one downstairs is probably worth <laughs> The toner the probably costs as much yeah. as uh, buying a whole Because so many one. people right. use it, okay. you know. But. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, See you tomorrow. Yes, you will. <laughs> I'll hang around a bit because I think I've got some accounts that are actually in gens like general insurance and uh, workers' comp. And I will say I'm the guilty one that stuck the higher number uh, in unemployment, so I can take the heat for that. <laughs> oh. Although, from what she showed me that we've actually spent this year, that number is high and we can come down on it. Yeah, so, I was uh, just asking. I mean, I was just looking through the budget, and that's yeah. I saw. Well, I knew, I, I just yeah. I knew, I knew we had some issues, and Jen had talked to me about it at the time, and she was, I don't know what to put in there, so I, I plugged it at the time. So uh, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter. I was just yeah. asking. Yeah. No, that's fine. If there was something I didn't know. That's all. Well, like I say, I think hers is actually. If, if, you, if, if you just do the te the treasurer collectors, it won't be, but if you're going to ask your questions on the employee benefits one, okay. then I've got some line items in there, so. All right. Well, we can start with the treasurer, or, well, I, we can start, <clears throat> do you want us to start with the benefit one so then you can leave? Whatever you are comfortable doing, I'm fine with. Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hide these because... Okay, so benefits. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I should share this with you so you can see. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't look. It's all mine. Do you want me to try to throw it up on the big screen for you? No, it's fine. This, okay. is, this is good. You can okay. see. Might be close. Yeah, no. <laughs> I can handle it. <laughs> I do have to put this in front of you. Not left handed like my daughter. Huh. All right, so these are all the um, like retirement, <coughs> workman's comp, unemployment. These are all the insurance pieces. Okay. And so this is, this column here is what we are talking about. All right. All right. So the retirement is a fixed number. Yeah. And that's the one-time payment. That's number, the right? one-time payment. Okay. Yes. And so I have the letter here. It's highlighted to make sure it's the right. correct one. <laughs> and then workers' comp. That's a you can get an estimate or something for that. We're adding right? up the two pieces to the two of them, both last year and this year. The workers' comp. Uh, I, I won't say where or whatever, but um, we had a $250,000 claim uh, on the workers' count. So that last year and this year is driving that increase still. Uh, uh, I will say since that, uh, we haven't really had any uh, substantial payouts or whatever. So if we get to another year with a three-year average, that oh, should okay. start coming down again. On the general insurance piece, uh, they did revalue some of our properties a couple years ago, which, which started it going up. But um, we do have on that a number of motor vehicle accidents, which have driven up that portion of it. So. Great. And then the new vehicles were added? And so, Yeah, the new vehicles were added also. So. A lot. It, it, it's it's interesting for some of them. I was surprised that, uh, especially since they're actually making us now do uh, the actual value uh, for them. Uh, it was more than the old ones, but I actually thought for what the vehicles were and worth, mm -hmm. it, I was surprised they weren't as expensive as I thought they would be as compared to my own, hmm. shall we say, 
personal vehicle insurance type of thing. So, uh, but yes, Do you we, still have, use we, my... we have been adding new vehicles yeah. to it. So mm -hmm. that is a portion of it. So. So next is the unemployment. So, you know, Ed put twenty thousand in there. No, I did. So um, we probably spent a little over twelve thousand overall this year. So, I mean. So was that because of layoffs, or what? I mean, because we're a pay as we go lot kind of, of thing. Um, so it was a lot of um, the ones that weren't fraudulent. A lot of it was. The ones that let people that got let go from the school during COVID, um, and they were still collecting. Or was um, this, or th was this all that happened since? I mean, I would have to look at the June? detail again because I haven't looked at it and the detail of it all in a little while. So I don't want to say anything that's not correct. Yeah, okay, other that. piece of the puzzle, and I haven't looked at it in all that specifics. But this one has always, shall we say, gotten my go as. Say I, you know, work for the town and maybe I put in 30 hours or whatever, and I have a second job, and you know, whatever that may be, whether it's working at Home Depot or Big Y or whatever. Believe it or not, if in the certain situations, and I shouldn't say Home Depot or Big Y there because because they're going to be around, but if you have an individual that gets laid off or that other job, shall we say, business closes, the unemployment will come back to us. Not if you can test it. Yeah, even if you can test it. They shouldn't if they're still, are they, and they're still working for the town? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've had, I've had I've fought it before yeah. too, Ed. Like yeah. if you, if you're still employing them at the same rate you were employing them, then they might get unemployment, but it's not going to be charged to the town, or it shouldn't be. You can, or you can fight that. I have, and I've lost it before. I mean, I fought for this against the school. Somebody that. Well, that's the school. I'm saying like a business that's out there that closes that they can't go after anymore. Not even a town entity. Yeah, because if you look at the actuals, like 2015 was huge because that's when we, you know, everyone, there was a bunch of people were on furlough. The, the, oh, yeah. the teacher or the principal at Norris, blah, 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 blah. But then you look at 17, 18, 19, they're less than $2,000. Yeah, they, it was very consistent. You know? Yeah, it was very consistent up until. And 20, I don't COVID think, was time. a lot either. It was consistent until COVID time. So, I mean, will it go back to maybe? I mean, you know, will, I doubt the school will close again, but they do say, you know, they're not positive on that, so. So, I guess it. You're I probably talking pairs that were paid because teachers were still getting paid because they were still working. Yeah. yeah. So, we only really see the. But, well, I don't, I'm not looking at the actual. I was just looking back because I was trying to hide those oh, columns. So, like, I'm just seeing what was budgeted. I'm not seeing without flipping back and forth what the actual spent was in those years. But yeah, so, so, I don't, I don't believe it ever went plenty, over the budgeted yeah. amount since I've been here. Right. And I think that when I first started, it did one year. Mm -hmm. But there was also an issue because I wasn't. At the time, I wasn't getting the bills because they weren't being mailed. They were only being, like you'd get an email that there was a notice, but I didn't have the same log anyway. Yeah. yeah. But so, so what we've spent already this year could have been somewhat of an overlap of bills from the prior fiscal year. You, are you not sure? Aren't they usually so delayed? Them, honest, well, they're delayed look, like two, um, two months, yeah. maybe. I haven't looked at it since um, before we started the fiscal year 21 audit stuff. So that was in January. So I don't, okay. I would want to look at that to make sure that I'm giving you the correct information. 
I have a huge big file of it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of fraud um, in, you know, a lot of fraudulent cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, my only concern is if you feel like there's still fraud out, that there's fraud on the bill, mm -hmm. if you pay it, if, if that, if your appeal hasn't been addressed, mm -hmm. and you just pay it, then I think it's less of a chance that we're going to get the money back. Yeah. So I would maybe try to call. Or yeah, I did already try yeah. to call, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was prior also, probably like November, December. Um, but I mean. Yeah, the flip side is they keep charging you interest. Well, yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah. So I know. I decided yeah. to just, you know, I did put it So I guess if it. we just keep track of it and just keep trying to pursue it and mm -hmm. just, and maybe they'll, we can get the interest back too. It's just, sometimes it's harder to get money back if you end up paying it rather mm -hmm. than So then the, so, the health insurance was there a... Okay, so are we, do you want to do the retiree portion first? Did you get the email I sent today? Mm -hmm. Did you see yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the group health retirees, um, so I sent like a spreadsheet that I use to calculate that. It's basically, I, I basically just take, you know, whatever month I did the budget in, say this year it was February. Um, you know, how many people are on each plan now and what's the cost mm -hmm. and multiply that by 12 and then add a couple. That's for the group health. I didn't add any for um, retirees. I do in retirees. You um, added a PPO, I think, right? To, let me, let me check the spreadsheet. But if you look at, I mean, there's only I 20. Added one, I added one Medex and a PPO dental family in my first number, and then two Medex and a PPO dental family in the second number. And then also on the Medex, I did originally do a 2% increase, and I haven't taken that out yet. Um, I feel like I probably could. So I don't think they're going to increase it. I mean, you. it went down a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah. And then, I mean, I think if there's an increase, it's going to be minimal. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I could probably take out the 2% increase. It's not a huge difference. Um, I can change it right now. But if you just look at, I, don't, I mean, again, you have the 210, 414. You have 22 budget, 21 budget, and 20 budget. I don't know what the actuals were. And even mm. if you look at 19 actuals, that's pretty consistent. It's not that far off in terms of the, two, yeah. the 210 isn't really unreasonable if you look year over year yeah, and, so, the, and the trend. And when I looked at what we spent so far this year and the amount of payments we have left on the Medex, we might have like three or 4,000 left over at the end of this year, but it's not a huge amount. Yeah. So. And one person retiring. Kind of, yeah. Well, it depends yeah, yeah. on their age, though. Yeah, that's true. Because right. if they're over sixty-five, it's they, they pretty inexpensive yeah. for us. But, but they go to them. So, but this, yeah, they'll go to the max. Right. So, yeah. So this is for the retiree. I'm talking about the retiree portion right now. Is yeah. That yeah. Or, no, or but I yeah. okay. no, but if if you have a teacher or you know, if you have someone who retires under sixty-five, then they basically then they stay, stay on yeah. the active yeah. plan. Yeah. So then you're talking yeah. with more money. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it still comes out of the retiree line, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just not any cheaper than so. what it is as an active employee. Well, yeah, it is. It's it is. fifty percent. Oh, that's true. Retirees are yeah, fifty percent. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So then, so group health, I you know I did the same thing. I just took okay. So how many how many employees do we have on the HMO single on the HMO double? I took the employer portion of seventy percent and. You know, basically just got a figure for a monthly figure, and then what is that for a year? You know, added all those together and came up with the 9538042421. So then at the bottom, you would have seen that I did do one number adding only one PPO plan and one PPO dental, so that would be 9652469.3. But when I um, the number I put in the budget was for two extra plans. Mm. So, I mean, I don't, I've always done two, 
we don't, I guess, you know, we don't have to, so we can do the 965 that will save, you know, a good amount of money, but going in, so as long as, you know, we don't go over in the end and then we're Well, I think that we'll know, I mean, a lot of your changes happen at the beginning of the fiscal year. Yeah. So if we go low with one, only one additional, to if we need to, if we need to, to try to get a balanced budget. Yeah, we can do that. Then, mm -hmm. e then we'll have a good idea by October. Mm -hmm. oh, this is what, I was what our yeah what our enrollment looks like, and so we should be able yeah. to maybe predict if we're going to go over if yeah. if you get quite a few new yeah you know what I mean like. So yeah. then we could make an adjustment at that time at a town meeting or That's something fine. to increase yeah. the budget. That's fine by me. I just always, you know, I just want to always budget and enough. I just never wanted to be short and try to find money at the Especially end. Especially since yeah. you know there's so, positions that are empty that are yeah. getting waiting to be and like, filled. Yeah, so. and I know it was mentioned yeah. that one year, like there was, you know, this huge amount left. But you know, we also had a bunch of people leave and not be not replaced. They all had family plans, and it adds up. That makes a big difference, right, you know. Right. And it leaves a lot. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. So, but, but you're um, right because then you still have money in the budget to cover it for if you had if you added two new people for six months or whatever. And then, mm -hmm. like Donna said, when you have a town meeting, you well, can estimate and you know do it yeah. at that point in time. We can put in the nine six five two four six nine three, you know, and with the understanding that maybe we'll have to do a transfer later, possibly if. But you know, probably most likely not. But I don't know. I just need to be safe. Right. <laughs> I mean, because that will. Um, I mean, it would be like twenty if if we lowered the the retiree and yeah the other one to the lower number that you have in yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, that's like twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. That it's even more. I think. Right. No. Oh no. Sorry. I don't. Nine six two, five and two oh five. Yeah. It's like twenty. Sure? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we could do that, and that will free up some money. Because the PPO is the, I mean, obviously someone can choose it, but it is the most expensive most plan, mm -hmm. and it's the family. So mm -hmm. you could you could have two singles mm -hmm. or two and a half singles, yep. you know, yep. for that same amount. Just depends on the... I know, it's kind of like, how do you know what someone's going to choose? Does South Hadley or other, like contribute the same amount, the town contribute the same amount for PPO and HMO? No. Because a lot of, I notice a lot of places have a different contribution for that too so that's I don't know how that would work and I don't get my insurance through them so I mm -hmm. didn't really know that yeah it it they do not they contribute more to the, the cheaper plans to the HMO right yeah a lot of places actually do that I just don't know how that would think that that would have to be negotiated in union contracts yes, possibly it and it would be a huge um, undertaking to change it right but yeah it's always an option I guess to change the contribution for PPO I mean you must not have that do you have a lot of people still on the PPO? Um, so we have, let's see, I can, well, back in February when I did this, we had, where am I? PPO family. We had 20 employees on the PPO family and nine on the PPO single. And then we had um, four, PPO retirees. Well, that I can see, especially so, if they don't live in the area, right. mm -hmm. because you yeah, can't, you can't, yeah, you can't really have the HMO and if you, mm -hmm. unless you're in this, you know. And a lot of that's why people get it too if their kids are in college or mm -hmm. you know, so they can still be yeah. sure where they are. So I don't know. I mean, I guess that's something to look into, um, how to do that and how it would affect. Negotiations. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Because they just um, negotiated. So. No, I know. But Not yeah, for this going, year, obviously. But, forward, but maybe, yeah. I don't think it's a, a huge difference, um, but I know it is a difference. Yeah. 
and I think they contribute more to a single plan than mm. a family plan. Mm -hmm. I can I can get that yeah. information for you if you want. Okay. Um, just as a reference, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So let's see. Where are we? Do you have any questions on health, group health? And nope. I'll I'll change those numbers too. Is that what we've decided that I'll change the numbers to the ones where we're adding only one plan, right? And I'm going to take the 2% mm -hmm. out of the um, medics right. increase. Cause mm -hmm. I, don't, I mean, I don't really think, when I did this actually originally, I did this budget in February and I originally did it with a 2% increase on everything because I didn't know then. Right. But, um, then I took it out for, mm -hmm. but you know, because medics isn't voted on until later on, I just, left that for now. Yeah. Yeah, you can take it out. So I'll do that. So that will be good. I really think the medics is gonna be yeah. negligible. I can't imagine that they would I mean really if it went up it. five or mm -hmm. ten dollars. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Mm hmm So okay. So let's see where are we now? Go across. Oh so Medicare. Kind of a straightforward calculation. Yeah. yeah. It's really not. Group insurance, life and retiree, that's kind of yeah. my people. And then who is doing the OPEB report now? I did the o I do the OPEB report. So I actually have the contract here too, so um No no, but I mean who who's the company, I guess oh, is I'm what sorry. I'm asking. Sorry. It's um <laughs> <laughs> it's um Dan Zeiger and Markov. Cool. Um, which is good because we were using Sherman mm -hmm. actuarial and he retired and then so when I went out like I went out and got you know quotes on mm -hmm. that and they they came in it ended up saving a lot because he charged like 10,000 a year oh he had gone up because um, I think he was like he was eight one eight, year, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. yeah. And we only had to have it done every other year or every third year. Yeah. So he yeah. was at ten thousand and twenty one. Oh. Yeah. So, but then, yeah. So every other year you have to do the full valuation, and then the off year it's not a full. So then he only charged for that year a thousand. He just oh. so, those. Yeah. So this company is charging three thousand four hundred and sixty five dollars for the full year, and then. 1,386 for the off year. Oh, wow. We're coming up, so. Hmm. Yeah, so it's good. And they did it the last couple of times, so it's been fine. Um, of course, as Tanya had said, um, that our liability would increase mm -hmm. because, do you remember what you said? I don't wanna word it wrong. Um, because of the way he did the report the way compared he did to the, the way report. they do. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, yeah, so that, that did happen. It's going to go uh, up every year regardless. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. you still use the same, like, spreadsheet, so you just add and take away. The same, yeah, the same spreadsheet. Yeah. So they, let, they said that was fine to submit data, so they let me use that, so that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They ask other questions, too, that he didn't ask. It's mm -hmm. a little more, de they ask for a little more detail, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with that anymore. So You're so lucky. It's pain. No tab. <laughs> <laughs> no payroll, no open. I know, that's nice, huh? <laughs> uh, All right. Well, that's All right, good. so now on to um, treasure. treasure. Thank you all. Thanks, Thank Sam. you. You're welcome. April, we're just Can a little add? behind. Have a good night, Chad. Night. It's fine. Okay, good. <laughs> we see that. <laughs> it's nice just to go. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. Okay. All right. I don't know if, so I didn't send you the updated one that I did. I had sent Bradley and Ed an updated. So I'm not sure what number do you have, for instance, for, I guess. So, treasurer collector salary right. for fiscal year 23 budget one. 
I have 57, 715, 75. Okay. Yep, so you do have the updated, okay. Okay, so the total of budget one is 143, 665, 78? Yes, okay. okay. So, so basically, so budget one is pretty much level funded. There is an increase in the treasurer collector salary. Um, the I did change the salary wages for the office staff also to reflect the 2%. And then treasurer collector expenses, that's level funded. The software support is contractual. So that's the total for um, point in staff right mm -hmm. and then tax title expenses i left level funded although i mean yeah there are i might actually be coming to you for a transfer on tax title possibly in may is there anything in the revolving there is a little bit there's a couple thousand in the revolving um but everything's takes taking a while so long in land court like i feel like you maybe even longer now because you know of covid so there's a couple that are sitting there, but um, there are a few properties that the Board of Health has requested that I, you know, start the process on. So I want to have money for the filing fees for two parcels, plus I need money to advertise, and we have. It usually comes up to be about like 250 bucks a parcel in advertisement, and we have a good 14 parcels or more that will have to be advertised this year. So um, it's going to be quite a bit there. So I'm going to put that yeah, together though person. for the huh? 200 each. Well, the last time I advertised, the advertising fee in the Gazette, the advertising fee literally ended up to be after dividing it amongst all the people that were in the advertisement, like 200 and something a person. Oh, but it, depa yeah, it depends yeah. on how many are listed yeah. and stuff too. Yeah. Right? So, but I just, yeah. it's going to be, but this is a lot more, so I know it's going to be a, you know, it's probably going to be like a $3,000 ad. Wow. Yeah. See, we just put ours in the reminder. You do put it in the reminder? I was wondering about that. Is it a lot? But we... No. <laughs> is it a lot cheaper? Is a it a lot, lot cheaper? Yeah, maybe I'll a do that. A lot cheaper. I wasn't, so last time I thought about that and then I wasn't sure, like, a lot of people had said, well, you know, they don't Get the reminders. So so sadly, the like, reminders are really big thing. Who sees the good these days, right? I mean, right? they do at my house, but. <laughs> I mean, yeah. in South Hadley, so it's, it's a, so it's I could been do around a lot longer mm -hmm. than it's been here. Yeah. yeah and they but been paying obviously, the Gazette is still. You have to advertise. A paper that yeah. South Hadley gets, too. Yeah. But um, take we, properties they've, over since, over since before taxes, my time there, they've always used the reminder. It's way cheaper. It's like $300 for my, I had like 20 parcels. Really? It takes like a year yes. to be able to get yes. lot cheaper. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's so I'll check out the reminder then, and then before I come to you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I guess I would just check and make mm -hmm. sure, but I don't see why. I and mean, you also have to post it other places. Yeah, right? yeah. So you're advertising it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So okay. where did you come up and with the fifty-seven thousand seven fifteen seventy-five? Because I see. Well, I guess the 72 is different than what you have, your little calculation Because the, the, um, the select board had said they would put the $5,000 back into my salary plus an additional 2% on top of that. So basically it's what my salary was plus 5000 mm -hmm. plus 2%. All right. So I'm just curious. All right. So... So if you so we're probably not going to get to the wish list. No. I mean no. I mean we can talk about it, but um, I mean there's so chances are. Yeah. So the wish list, like you know, I'm not sure. I mean Ed had talked about making three different departments five days: accounting, assessor, and treasurer collector. Um, originally he had said just treasurer collector and accounting. Um, he added on assessor. So this is. So the wish list is really, if we became a five-day department, so it's adding an extra day on 
for myself. You know, originally I had cut the hours of the admin, but oh. to kind of, like, if you look at the difference in year change, like, really, right. it's only, for me to work five days, it's only, like, an extra $3,000 compared to the level-funded budget. But um, mine, mine has <clears throat> the, the wages, not yours, but the staff, at 60000 on budget one and forty nine one eighty one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's cutting the admin treasurer collector down to 18 hours. But wouldn't that kind of defeat the Well, because I'm really- being open five days. No, I see well, I'm not open, but- So originally if, that was my idea get for, for me to done. get five days, because right. I thought it would be nice for me to have a day where I could like just work on reconciling, work on things that you know, you, it's easier to like do if you're not constantly being interrupted, you know? Right. Um, and I realized that like, in the office, you know, there are times when, like when my prior admin was there that she, you know, she would have downtime at the end of the day or, you know, there seemed to be like more downtime out there. So my option was, okay, well, maybe I can assign duties that I'm doing to them mm -hmm. or because, you know, I think a lot of the things, like when new people were hired, you took back and started doing in the office and it's really, you know, that I used to do in the outer part of the office when I was there and they've never been pushed back out. You know what I mean? Like I think a lot of things you started doing after I left to the first time. Like in your part. Like, cause I used to work a lot on, I remember on the tax title, even like not the final, the letters and that. And now I do that all like myself, you know, they don't do any of that. But there's a bunch of wow. um, different, yeah, you know, things that I do now that I didn't like put back out there. Delegate. delegate I didn't delegate, delegate it out there. <laughs> so because yeah. you know we have such turnover too, so it's hard to like everyone's always learning. You know, yeah. like ever since I started, it's mm -hmm. you know it's been turnover. People learning. Even Christy hadn't been there then she, but the night she went to the new position, so she was learning. And there's never been like people out there who fully knew the mm -hmm. job, so it makes it hard. You know. To yeah. delegate them more duties, but so I thought that if at least if I was the consistent one there and I could you know get like you know more done that it would be beneficial because so that was why I did that. However, it looks like you know if Ed wants to make five day weeks for other departments and they're not cutting their staff, their admin staff, I don't feel like I then at that point should really have to cut mine. I guess. You know, right. But so it was the purpose of the fifth day to be open to the public too. No, it was only for me to go in and work on things that you needed, just time to work on, like you know, because I reconciling, mm -hmm. um, you know, reports that take a while, take concentration, because I literally get interrupted all day long, and especially now that it's. It's really only me and Christy in the morning, and then, you know, Robin comes in for a couple of hours in the afternoon. So, it would it would have just helped. But so why I'm so be I'm actually you know at this point I am behind in reconciling reconciling. I'm behind in entering receipts because I'm doing like you know work in the outer part of the office. I've been you know helping close fiscal year 21. So. It's Have you had good. any applicants for? Um, so I was actually going to interview someone tomorrow, and they canceled. Oh, jeez. So sad. You know, they just got the message when I was sitting here. They have a better. Uh, they had a better job offer. Hmm. With Westfield Electric. <laughs> so Tracy just left for Chicopee Electric. People at Westfield City Hall are leaving for Westfield Gas and Electric. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a good place to work, yeah. from what I hear. <laughs> they pay well, and they yes, pay benefits. they do. Yeah. Very well. Oh, mm -hmm. South Valley Electrical Light does, too. Yeah. So, that's the spiel on that. But <sighs> I don't really think that it is going, I don't think the five-day thing is going to happen this year. Yeah. So. I think it's just a lot, um, you know, between 
trying to adjust salaries to incorporate that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Realistically, I think it's more than the budget is going to be <coughs> able handle. to sustain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right. right, yeah, you already have to find right. a good amount of money. So <coughs> uh, that's what that was. So I find it very interesting, and I'm sure maybe it's because of the way they did it, but I find it interesting that they're going to put the $5,000 back in your salary, but they're the ones who voted at town meeting no last year when you had a citizen's petition to give you yes. more money. I know. You know I mean? I just find it kind of, I don't yeah. know. I mean, it just, and it was the select board people that voted no. Mm -hmm. I know. So it's just like all of a sudden they've had a change of heart or I don't know. It's just kind of quirky. Not to say yes. that you don't shouldn't get this. I'm just saying, like, mm -hmm. they, you know, all of a sudden, they're like, wait a minute, let's, you know, do this mm -hmm. instead of doing it then. And or maybe they see maybe so their eyes were opened. Yeah, could have been on a keeper. I would think. You know, <coughs> so many people leaving. Gee. All it all it takes is a few vacancies. Yeah, yeah which is a good thing. Um, you know that they're kind of looking at things, um, but. You've been telling them Most of the time somebody leaves and they end up paying whoever comes in more. More. <coughs> yep. It's like when Heather left. Yeah. That is true. And I'm sure that we could add, I'm sure there's a list. Oh, there's probably you now. Yeah. And anywhere you, you go. Um, but anyway, so I, I just find it kind of. No, I, yeah, I understand that. I, it's kind you of know. strange. Because mm -hmm. that could have been a problem solved last year and then you wouldn't then now you have that this issue on top was of a, a whole bunch of other issues it was a combined people. article because it was me and the town clerk on it but i mean i don't think that's the reason why it didn't pass i don't think it would have passed even if i was alone on an article yeah, 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 but yeah. it was combined yeah. but it would have solved yeah the issues of the salary but i think some part, part of the piece. issue was too that it was creating an unbalanced budget i mean i was at that meeting yeah, yeah. 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 I, but I did like put forth that in my um, in budget each, request. Right. So if they really wanted to do it, they could have yeah. put it in the budget, but they right. they didn't. So um, yeah. I did notice on the totals page. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know which version it was though. That the stipends, because I was questioning how come it wasn't on there. There was nothing in the stipend line. Oh really? Mine. I have a. You have it on your page, but yeah. when I looked at the. So there's oh, one the budget? for certification stipends, and then right. there's one under the treasurer collector. They don't have it in the regular budget. I haven't even seen the budget yet. Like at it's all. in the treasurer collector. Yeah, I know, Stipend right? line, which it should be. <laughs> That's what I thought. So it's in. So where account. am I finding it here? What line is it on? It's on thirty-five. It's, you know, Excel line 35. Okay. So it should just be a thousand. Right. So no one else is getting it right now anyway. No, so maybe no that's else. why. I, I mean, saw another line that just said certification stipends and it was blank and so I was going to question that. It was originally up there because the select board or the town administrator has to kind of approve to pay it out and so that's why it wasn't in your line item but I'm not quite sure why it got changed but yeah because it okay. was you and it was as long as it's still in the yeah. summer because I was yeah. just concerned that it yeah. wasn't there and I didn't know why yeah yeah okay so something you know you and I went through this before I left we were looking at you know Fadar and other yeah. software pieces if that comes to pass again, you might want to look at um, the community compact grant, but it's for um, like st streamlining business pro mm -hmm. processes. And it's one that the town, I don't think, has applied for before mm -hmm. where you can get money to implement, you know, it's best business practice community compact grant. Mm -hmm. Because um, I was looking at it in Westfield for budget book, but mm. then you have to pay for it going forward. But this would be something where if you paid for it with the grant the first year, you know, you could, if you were to install yeah. it, implement it, and all that, then and then have the they just have the maintenance fees going forward. So, yeah, I just think, a thought. I think it's one of the items that they want to um, use ARPA funds on. 
Oh. So okay. I believe that <coughs> at the fourth um, in an, one of the applications mm -hmm. for a request. So or if you update the spring book or whatever. I think last night that that was one that they were, you know. So what do you know? What one you're looking at, or? So we were looking at Vadar and Springbrook. The the Springbrook is the cash management part of it. The Springbrook is the version of Softright that they kind of yeah. got purchased out from. So Vader is so, great. I mean, we watched the Vader. I mean, it saves so much, you know, double, triple, yeah. quadruple yeah. entry. Um, the only thing with Vader is it doesn't have its own payroll. payroll yes. So that then you the, have to use Harper's. That was which the kind is of fine. drawback. I mean, Harper's is, I really like Harper's. I use it in West Hampton, and it saves so much time. Like, you're yeah. not doing the... Um, 941s, you're not doing your own W-2s, ACA, so, I mean, having something like that, you really can cut hours in the office, you know? So, and then have one person not benefited, and it helps if there's that non-benefited position. I guess the only issue with that is then that position's not as, like, viable, so you might have a lot of turnover. Turnover, there, yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, I don't know what the right answer is anymore, yeah. <laughs> you know? So because you still need to have the benefits, you know, unless you have... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, like, it um, changes. I don't know. I, I just I think of these things and I'm like, but this is going to, but then this is going to, you know, it's uh, right. It's hard. But if for whatever but reason yeah. it doesn't work with ARPA, I would look at best business yeah. practices for a community compact. Yeah. I'll have to so. mention that to Ed because he's the one that always applies for that, right? Uh, this is a different one oh, than the different? other ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll have to see if I can find the link and yeah. I'll send it to you. Okay. And then I had all these people calling me like every day about budget books and mm -hmm. all that stuff. I get yeah. emails all the time. Yeah. Because they did a presentation at the treasure collector meeting. And yeah. Then, yeah. You guys have Munis, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have Munis. Yeah. Too, Munis, so. Yeah. yeah. So we can't. Munis is too big for here. Yeah. Too yeah. expensive, right? Yeah. Use well, so and honestly. <laughs> Like, we have a full-time IT person, and mm. he deals with a lot of munis updates and things behind the scenes that it's we don't even know about. Yeah. So, you know, it might be just it's complicated, too much. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we don't even so use better. munis, to, I don't think, to the most capacity that mm -hmm. it's used for. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I'm like, wow, we should let the system yeah. do this. You know? And I think before we started using Harper's, they used to use the payroll mm -hmm. system in munis, too. Yeah. But they don't anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah it's very familiar. But Vader with that. and Harper's are <laughs> both. Very familiar um, with that now. Oh, yeah. They would both be in the cloud, so you could use it from anywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to necessarily even have your work laptop. You could just, you can log in anywhere, so that's nice. I mean, one thing, um, like South Hadley, it's mandatory that you're direct deposit. Yes. And so we, are, we do that in West Hampton, too. Right, and, and using Harper. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. is, I mean, we mail one check there because the person's just been getting a check forever. Yeah. I guess. So when I started, I mean, the occasionally life, there's a fluke. Like I had somebody that got a check for a penny. A penny. And I never thought they were going to cash it, but they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> but yeah, so like it was just something when the how it was set up mm -hmm. and it netted to a penny instead yeah. of. Yeah. But. So yeah, we'll see. You know, it would be nice to have new software. Would definitely save time for everyone. For you know, I think it would be better for assessors even for because they would end up being one of the users on Vader. From I'm, what it's right when we watched it, it seemed like they would end yeah, up being a user. Maybe, but it's it would be nice if you could like use pieces of all of them and get one because there are parts of soft right that I really liked. You know that I have in Munis to do journal entries. The, it's just yeah. kind of not, so, it's weird, and I liked how Softwrite did it. Yeah. But yet, yeah. to be able to not have to double do the receipts would yeah. be great, you know? Yeah. Well, even no the abatements and exemptions, yeah. well, exemptions if they're so, pre-entered, but yeah. abatements, like now, the assessors input the abatements, they give Into us the list, cell. and yeah. automatically. And we input it again. Yeah, so but when we we just, input, I just go in and hit GL post. Correct. Yep. So they could input the abatements right into VADAR, and then we would just basically pull them right into ours, and then when the refunds had to be done, 
it would, would just pull it right into your content. That they wouldn't have to enter all the names and addresses. Right. And then That's also, like, um, too. when addresses are updated, you know, we would, whenever we wanted to, um, we could basically pull that information from the assessors to our office to update our system. So it wouldn't just update when the preliminary bills and when the court, you know, when the See, the way, said. even though we're all on Munis, um, the assessors use vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so all their changes get entered into vision mm -hmm. first. And so until there's a bill file created, mm -hmm. Munis oh. isn't updated so until they, are, they, so they do a whole it. build. So they do their updates right away uh -huh. in Vision, but you don't see the changes in Munis until a new uh, bill file is run so really and then a parcel be update. Do, really, Vader won't be able to do that either then. I think it would be similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a right. whole, like when we create so that those, would there's not a happen. whole process. So that's too bad. Yeah. That, was, that was sounded really exciting to me because <laughs> after we print bills, like, or you know, all throughout after um, the original bill file is put in, we have to like constantly like print deeds. But, to but the way we do it is we have a new bill because we mail bills every <coughs> quarter, so we get a new bill file every quarter. Mm -hmm. And when I create sewer and trash bills, I have the assessors run the update from Vision, and mm -hmm. then I can run a parcel update oh, okay. so that the files updated to yeah. new owners yeah. before the sewer so, yeah. 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 before I create those bills. So yeah. it's it's not like a huge it's not like it's I think it's doable. Yeah. Like if you could do it twice a year. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, right now it's like you spend a lot of time on the deeds, you know, and <laughs> Yeah. It's just like those things that and remailing the bills to the right owners. Yeah. yeah. It's kinda like, crazy so but Anyways, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Good <laughs> <laughs> right. work. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> All right. See ya. Have a good night. Bye, Donna. Bye, Vicky. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you for being patient. Welcome. Um, just an update. Dave has thankfully taken the role of chair. And I'm going to work. Oh, okay. Welcome. Yes. Congrats. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> I added the baton. Do you want us up at the table? Uh, it, yeah, I want to. Sure. Yeah. Wherever you want, wherever you're comfortable. Dry, we need money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. So I know you guys change your wages to sixty thousand, hoping to get five days. But where does that? I mean, it's not a bad thought, but I don't know what the end game is for the town in terms of like Jen was going to do in her office accounting, but I don't know that that's going to happen. So. Or have you had a different conversation? Well, we're we're in limbo because we want to be able to offer a competitive wage. Correct. And right now we don't have that, mm -hmm. so that's why we're here. So, however, we can make that competitive wage work, whether it's a four-day work week with higher hourly, or whether it's a five-day work week, which mm -hmm. probably an assessor needs at this point, um, because the town is growing and it's busy and as we're finding we're a little behind. Mm -hmm. We um, started off behind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when the assessor left uh, almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. And now we're really behind. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the the temporary person able to do? On so Dave Zagorski is uh, giving us probably 10 Maybe 10, maybe 12 hours maybe a week. Maybe 12, yeah. but I'd say 10. Um, so he's just keeping us afloat in terms of making sure we hit deadlines and mm -hmm. doing the tasks that need to be done. Um, we didn't offer him a large hourly. Um, he was willing to come on at, what, it's 26-something an hour? Um, I think it was 26, yeah. Yeah. 
I certainly would like to give him incentive to stay on with us. Mm -hmm. He works for West Hampton and he works for Sunderland too. So um, I've tried to pull him this way, like full time, but he doesn't want to leave the other towns. So um, we've had an ad out. Uh, yeah, we've for had over almost a year. No we response. Have no response. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to get an assessor competent. The, the Massachusetts I mean, I, I think that Association or organization laughs every time I call. I mean, I think from what I've heard from our assessor, who's the president or whatever of the association, yeah. I think, but is that there's positions everywhere, everywhere that aren't being right. filled. And so I guess my concern is that even upping the salary because that's not really that right. that much for a five day work week right. if you're looking for what you're looking for. Right. I don't know that that's going to bring a person in. I think it will. I don't. I know if we don't, we're going to get nobody. Okay. And if we don't get anybody, we're going to lose money because all the money comes from the assessors. Yeah. Uh, the growth, uh, new construction, everything that we that we can increase about two and a half comes through the assessor's mm -hmm. office. And nothing is going through the assessor's office right now. Um, personal property is being neglected. Uh, growth is being neglected. Do we have growth all over the place that is just not being picked up? Mm -hmm. And if we can't do that, we can't increase money to pay everybody. Uh, and I think the 60,000 will pull somebody in from another town that is paying less than they should be. Uh, and that's my thought. Uh, I've been in the business a long time, and I think 60 will bring somebody in. And then we can get our ducks in order here and start bringing in growth and doing the work we're supposed to be doing. Uh, at the four-day work week, we were just doing administration work, getting the DOL reports ready, but we weren't going out in the field. We weren't driving the town, which is what we're supposed to be well, doing. Well, I mean, when Lori was here at four days, that was happening. But Lori had um, an assistant. I was here 25 hours. Yes, exactly. Jane was here 25 right. hours. So, I mean, the assessing department had yeah, a true. bigger payroll in 2012. We were at 75,000 than, I think, yeah. 65, I think, for the year. We're 65 for, yeah. Yeah, because at that point, Lori was doing 35 hours a week. Right. And we had Janine doing 25. Yeah. I mean, it was a full staff office. It was, yeah. And everybody, and, and we haven't, since I've been on the board, even come close to that number yeah. from 2012. Dave comes from the vision background. Mm -hmm. He actually helped write the software for vision. So he's been in tons of appraiser uh, uh, assessing offices. And when Lori left, we had a heck of a time to get even a temporary person come right. in and do stuff. Right. You know, and then yeah. that was yep. at that point kind of kind of in the same boat, you know. Right. Well, the, the problem also is that the assessing industry has uh, a lot of them have retired. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's a, it's a it's not a dying industry. It's a very up and coming industry. But around here, there were uh, a lot of people that retired, and a lot of the assessors that are. Um, They've been clerks, they've been working in the assessor's office for a uh, long time, uh, are ready to move up, uh, and, but they're not going to move up 40. Our assessor left for a lower position with less lower, I say less responsibility. With more money. Uh, for 20% more, yeah. uh, just no work. responsibility. Well, just our in South Hadley, our clerk position, you know, it's five days, but think she's a little over 50. I mean, she's been there for the clerk, over yeah. 10 years, right. or probably yeah. probably more than that. But and our principal, I mean, this is an upcoming town, but it's not a simple town to work in. We have more Chapter 61s mm -hmm. uh, that takes that takes uh, a lot of time. A lot of time, mm -hmm. and all the new construction out there, which is we are the number one uh, t um, municipality in the state, uh, growing right now. Uh, and that information all has to get in, all of the construction. Uh, we had Martha putting this in by herself uh, instead of somebody in a clerk position while she can get mm -hmm. out in the field and do that work. Um, I personally went out myself and drove the town and found 25 personal property accounts that were never listed, and they've been here for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We need a competent assessor to get this growth and get money. I mean, the personal time. property has always been 
being, I mean, it's a pain in the neck to collect from a collection point of view, but it's just not fair that there never has been any equal. There hasn't been. You know, and it's just, it's not fair. Why are some businesses, just because they report it on a form of list, they get taxed for it, but everybody else who just throws it in the trash and doesn't do it don't get. Right. And, and right now we're doing that ourselves. Yeah. Um, and we have day jobs. Dave's <laughs> doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you go knock on the door, say, hey, we want to come and assess your property for your personal property. They're going to go, no way. I've never had this done before. You're not coming in the door, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you're so, kind of stuck up against that, too. Yeah. You got to get caught up in what you do. It, it's, you coast from there, but you collect. And we can't grow. The town's growing, but our money's not growing because we can't assess about two and a half percent unless we get the obvious stuff and that's all mm -hmm. we're getting right now um, and i think uh, you know we just need somebody competent i've been in this business for 35 years and, and the assessors the towns that have really good assessors uh, everything's runs really smooth uh, they get their growth uh, and the others that, that just they just fumble along they just get what's what's required and that's why we need uh, the extra money Mm -hmm. And the admin wages are up because Janine is still willing at this point with flexibility in her schedule to give us 16 hours a week rather than 12. Mm -hmm. So, and, and she's really carrying quite a load. She yeah. is, and I don't know how long that's going to go. Right. Um, so. Do you have somebody else in mind? We asked for some help from the MAAO. Uh, I spoke to your assessor, uh, Missy, mm -hmm. uh, and I've known her for a long time, and she just said, work on the street as you can't pay anything. It wasn't just that not enough. It's just like, nobody's going to go near us. And that's what she told me directly. I know. And then the rest of the budget is what we have gotten for quotes from people from our different vendors and things. Mm -hmm. Expenses will be about the same. I think the total uh, outside of the uh, uh, assessor's wages is only up a couple of thousand yeah. dollars just based on increases yeah. over a couple the years. of vendors have gone up on what, what they've been charging us, like everything, so. And so, uh, so Roy Consultants is, and he's going to do the cyclical inspections also? Yeah. Roy Bishop? Yeah. Because he's getting ready to retire too, I think. Well, at yeah. Some point. And, and, and <laughs> thanks for yeah, yeah. bringing that up. So, Roy is. Doesn't he have um, someone else in this? His, his son, son does it, yeah. 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 So, we, we will be coming back. I just want to let finance know that toward the end of the fiscal year, this fiscal year, 22, we're going to be coming back to you and to the Board of Selectmen because we're moving monies okay. around. Because you probably needed some more right. help from him. Yeah, we're, we're okay. hiring him to do about 400, 400 maybe, plus, yeah, plus if, if he can, before the end of the fiscal year to do inspections and try to get us slightly caught up or at least get us to a better point than where we are now to just meet the DOR re uh, requirements. We have to so. inspect all properties by fiscal 24, yeah. which is next year, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're only uh, maybe 20% there. Yeah. Oh. So uh, we have, we're taking advantage of. So having some cash in, in mm -hmm. the principal assessor up. wage line. Yeah. We're going to use it, so. And so what would you anticipate, this is kind of a revenue question, what would you anticipate new growth for 23? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard to say because we're just keeping our head above water right now to see. Uh, I think we are at 10 to 11 million per year for the last three years, mm -hmm. uh, which is $15 times whatever that is. Um, I know that when competent assessors goes in, go in, they increase that a lot, okay? Um, just because we're having a revenue discussion tomorrow with the mm, Board of right. Selectmen, and yeah. so right. I just want to be sure the original first pass, I saw $195,000 added to the levy limit for new growth, and I was like, hmm, if no one's working in the office, really, then how are you going to capture that? And I just want to be sure that that number is... 
Yeah. That Fairly is. accurate because there's no other wiggle room and no other local yeah. receipts in order to make that work, I guess is well, my we're, point. We're going by the three-year average is what we did. Okay. Um, and we anticipate that uh, a lot of this is new houses that okay. are going up and we'll get that growth under new houses. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to we'll capture some of that with garages and inspections and okay. Okay. Yeah. So. This, you know, because you put, you know, 195 and again, you guys are without a person that can actually do that job and it comes in at 150 there's no other room to make that up that. for the budget you know because everything is so tight in Southampton there's no yeah. real big wiggle room yeah. I, I don't I, I think we're if we get somebody we're gonna be above that uh, significantly if we don't we'll probably be close mm -hmm. right now I'm finding personal property growth on my own uh, and you know I'll get some of it uh, mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have gotten anyway mm -hmm. um, okay like I said, this is we're just having this discussion tomorrow, and I just right. you know wanted right. to have it with you yeah. guys first because right. um, you know since you guys are here, so um, yeah. I mean, I don't disagree with you in terms of the assessor wages and whatnot. I just until we put the whole thing together, I don't know what the budget can handle. I understand. Yeah. And I don't want to be a downer, but if we don't. If we keep it where it is, we're not going to get it. I know. Uh, I, I, I don't it's, disagree with you. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, we're going to walk in the office on the day and just keep our head above water. You know, and the DLR is yeah. going to say, you didn't file this. Okay, we'll file it. Yeah. That's where we're going to be. It's, it's kind of where parts of the other town, the parts of the town are gone now. Right. Um, anyway, and you don't want to have all the parts. Anyway. Yeah. So. No, I'm just. <laughs> I, we believe that if we get a, a talented person in here, more than cover. Do you, do you think you have a lead on a talented person potentially if that in, if that was increased? We don't right now. We you don't. I mean, it, it takes. You don't just get assessors out of school, or mm -mm. you know, it's you a learn to, task. It, oh no, I know that. Been. Yeah. You know, I know that I. I know somebody that's in Springfield that's making a lot more. He said if we raised it to 80, he'd take it. I, said, I laughed. I said, there's no way. Uh, but he did say a couple of names out there that he knows that says they're not happy with their salary, oh. which is less than 50. Mm -hmm. And you know, and for that, if I mean that makes if sense. Up, we would pull somebody. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can also possibly get someone who's an assistant now but that who's been in the job long enough to at least have way less of a learning curve then mm -hmm. I agree with that you but know we don't want this to be a training ground either and that's typically what happens right, right. I think right, it's but inevitable based on what the budget can handle for you know unless someone's kind of at that level where they are gonna work here for the last 10 years of their career most people are gonna come and right and because they, they they know they can be an assistant in Westfield and make more than 60 grand right. you know and you right. have five other people working in the office or go to East Hampton and right. make you know more right. than that yeah there's also assessors out there that are working in high stress cities oh, and yeah. towns that are just not the same as Southampton that would be willing to come here yep uh, they might be uh, in their we career can, yeah right yep. and but they say well not for 40 but I come here for yeah. 60 yeah we mm -hmm. can also yeah. offer some flexibility too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. yeah, you have to be creative, I yeah. think, kind of down the... All right. I mean, we'll do what we can. I mean, you know, obviously the, the, it's not all up to us, the but... The select board is very well aware of where we are. I mean, I, we are coming today. from yeah. what, what you come from and being in municipal work, we obviously understand and support how necessary it is, you know? And the problem is, is that the public is not educated. They just don't understand. I mean, that's why the citizens petition didn't pass. Yeah. With Lucy and yeah. yeah, and Jen, because people do not understand. And somehow we've got to get the word out. I don't know how to do that, but. It's whether it's a spreadsheet, like this is what they're earning, you know. Like you can pull up everybody's salaries down in Southwick and see what they're paying their people mm -hmm. and their budget. Um, I think part of the problem is is that 
you get the same 120 people that come to annual town meeting every yep. year. You know, so, and they're not necessarily the ones you have to convince. No, I understand. You that. know, and it, I've done a, I've done a postcard campaign and it worked really well. We stayed at the dump and we handed out and we chatted with people and they showed up, a lot of them. It's like making the town clerk and the treasurer collector appointed, appointed versus elected. Right. Which, yeah. You know, I mean, I guess maybe you can keep the treasurer, not the treasurer collector, but the town clerk elected, but the treasurer collector, you need someone who knows how to do that job. Right. It's like, what if you were to elect an assessor? Right. I mean, you, someone has to have the skills to be able to do that job. You know, it's... Yeah. 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 And what happens when you just get somebody that, you know, somebody leaves and they say, oh, I think I can do it. And the learning curve and what can really happen in a town that for someone that doesn't know what they're doing because you have to pick someone from town. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could just be like, sure, yeah, that sounds good, but. I mean, we appreciate you guys um, being on the board and, or at least I, you know, that you, I, I, that you volunteer your time to yeah. to uh, try to. to spend a lot of time on yeah. the computer, which I don't have time to do right now, but. Yeah, every day, so. Yeah. Really? We got to get the person property done. Nobody knows how to do it, so. I'm just doing it. Oh. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely takes a lot of time. Even if there was somebody in that office, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, yeah, if we could get somebody who you could train to just plug things in, that would be helpful, mm -hmm. like one of our seniors or something. So. Mm -hmm. Well, well, if I was retired, <laughs> then. <laughs> uh -huh. How many deaths? I'm supposed to be out golfing. <laughs> 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 but anyways, thank you for your volunteering of time, because I know you guys jumped on when uh, things got a little hairy. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Trying to make sense of it all. Yeah. From a different seat, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least you're bringing the experience to this side of the, yeah, things. So yeah, I mean, I guess we both kind of felt like we wanted to try to see if we could help, you know, like yeah. it's our town too, and even yeah. though we don't work here anymore. Right. So look here. Yeah. 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 I think they're wonderful. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Yeah. All right, so I guess we will. Adjourn at 8.17 p.m. So moved. Second. <laughs> is this it? Don't oh, so. This is it. Oh. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.